Do you take things out of your kitchen to feed your plants? Maybe things like leftover coffee or the water from boiling vegetables. Or maybe you even share some of your beer with your plants. Lots of people do these kind of things and they claim that plants love this stuff. Now this is a term that kind of irritates me. First of all, plants don't show love. So how could you know they love it? They don't even say thank you. But the real problem is people give this stuff to plants and just because plants are growing well, they assume it's good for them. Well, they might have grown well without this stuff. The only way you can know for sure is to look at the science behind it. And that's what I'm going to do in this video. I've taken 13 common things that people take from their kitchen and use to feed their plants, both potted plants and garden plants. And I'm going to go through and very quickly have a look at each one of these. I've also written a blog post that goes into more detail about each of these items. And if you want to read that, I'll put a link to that in the description below. But I'm going to try to keep this video short because we've got 13 things to go through. Every one of the items I'm going to describe has water in it. And water obviously is good for plants. But I'm going to ignore that in all these items. The first one is banana water. So people take banana skins, cut them into small pieces, put them in a jar of water, put that in the sun for several days. And the resulting liquid is called the banana tea. And that is great stuff has lots of potassium, people claim, and they feed that to their plants. Well, the reality is that it has very little potassium in it. The, the bananas have potassium. The water that's created from it doesn't, and they have almost no other nutrients. So banana water does nothing for plants. How about beer? Is that something you should be giving your plants? Well, beer does contain a number of things like carbohydrates and alcohol, those will be used by microbes as a food source, but plants generally don't use those. Now, beer also has some protein in it, and protein will turn into nitrogen, and that will feed plants. But the amount in beer is pretty small. Beer also contains calcium and magnesium, and that's important for plants, but most soil already has calcium and magnesium. Soil in the ground rarely is deficient of those. And potted plants probably have enough calcium and magnesium. But there may be some value there. If you want to give protein to your plants, here's a better idea. Drink the beer, collect your urine, and that has a fair amount of nitrogen in it. And then feed that to your plants. What about coffee? You know that cold coffee that you're not going to drink? A lot of people pour that onto their house plants. Well, did you know that coffee contains a lot of carcinogens? Here's a list of some of the things it contains. Benzene, furan, formaldehyde, ethylbenzene, hydrogen peroxide. Would you knowingly give such chemicals to plants? Well, if you're giving them coffee, that's exactly what you're doing. And in fact, if you drink the coffee, you're also ingesting these chemicals. Don't get too alarmed. The amounts in coffee are very low and they're not going to harm you or the plants. But why give them to plants? Now black coffee has almost nothing in it. Coffee that has sugar and milk adds some value through the sugar and milk part. The sugar will feed microbes, doesn't do much for plants. But the milk does have some protein in it and that can be good for the plants. The problem with coffee is it also contains caffeine. And caffeine is toxic to plants. So pour that coffee down the drain. Don't give it to your plants. Lots of people use compost tea and give that to their plants. Mostly outdoor plants. And people rave about this product. It's so great for plants. Well, the reality is that it really isn't. It does contain some nutrients. And those are valued plants. But you can put the compost directly on the garden too. And it does the same thing. Now, there's a whole group of other people who think it's the microbes in compost tea that are important. And that's just misinformation. Adding microbes to either soil in the garden or to potted plants does nothing to increase the health of those plants. So compost tea is okay. It adds nutrients to the soil, but it's not nearly as great as people make it out to be. How about the water from a fish tank? 
Well, fish poop has minerals in it and it has nitrogen in it. So it's actually good for plants. And you know that you can grow aquarium plants in it. It will also be good for your house plants. It's much better than putting it down the drain. Gatorade. Now we drink Gatorade to replace electrolytes in our bodies. And plants also have electrolytes. So it sounds like Gatorade would be a good candidate. The problem is that most of the electrolytes in Gatorade are sodium and potassium. Now potassium is one of those nutrients plants need. So that's a value. The problem is sodium is very toxic to plants. And it's really the last thing you want to put in the soil around your plants. As far as other minerals go, Gatorade doesn't contain very many of those. Because of the higher levels of sodium in Gatorade, I would not put that on plants. Milk. A lot of people like putting milk on their plants. It's probably more popular in the garden where they put large amounts on. But you also put some on along with your teas and coffees and so on. Well, it turns out that milk has nitrogen in it, about 0.5% nitrogen. It also has some minerals. So you can think of milk as being a very dilute fertilizer. So it does add value to the plants. The problem is that as a nitrogen source, milk is very expensive. I worked it out and it's about $150 for a pound of nitrogen if you're going to use milk. And that's a pretty expensive fertilizer. So if you have old milk that you're not going to drink, putting it on the ground around plants is of value. But don't use fresh milk for that. Lots of people like using molasses. And this has magical properties for some people. Molasses is mostly sugar. And plants don't use those sugars directly. The sugars will feed bacteria and other microbes. And having those grow in your soil has some value. But there's really no long-term value in using molasses. Now molasses can also add some sulfur, but there are much less expensive ways to get sulfur and most soil isn't deficient of sulfur. And if you're fertilizing your house plants, you're adding enough sulfur anyways. Pasta water. Once you've finished cooking your pasta and you've excess water on there, is that something you should put on your plants? Well, pasta water contains mostly starch doesn't do anything for plants, although it will feed some microbes. The other problem with pasta water is possible salt. Now, the proper way to cook pasta, according to the experts, and I'm no expert on cooking pasta, is to put salt in the water. That raises the boiling point of water and cooks the pasta better. If that's what you do, then you should never put that water on plants. Sodium is too toxic to plants. If you're like me and you don't put salt in your water, then you can take the pasta water and put it on your plants. It won't do them any harm, but it's also not doing them much good. Now is rice water any different? So you're boiling your rice and you're left with some water. Is that good for plants? Well, it's pretty much the same as pasta water in that it contains a lot of carbohydrates and starch. And that's not really good for your plants. I cook rice in such a way that I don't have excess water. It all gets absorbed into the rice. But depending on your source of rice, it may actually be a good idea to have excess water and take that off. And the reason is that rice can have high levels of arsenic in it. The problem is that that arsenic now has gone into the water and you really don't want to use that on your plants. So rice water, put it down the drain, not on your plants soda pop. Now, I don't know about you, but I never have excess soda pop, so I don't know why I pour it down on my plants. But some people believe it's good for plants. So the first claim is that because soda pop contains a lot of carbonation, that's that CO2 in the bubbles, that that is good for plants. Remember, plants use CO2 in photosynthesis, but that photosynthesis takes place in the leaves, not in the soil. So pouring this onto soil is not going to have any effect. And to be honest, plants don't have trouble getting enough CO2 from the air. So we don't have to give them carbon dioxide. Now pop does have some minerals in it and they might be of use to plants, but the amount of those is very low. What pop can have in it is a lot of sugar. Now, if there's a little bit of sugar, again, it doesn't hurt plants. They really can't use it, but the microbes will use the sugar. 
but there can be a problem if you have pop that has high levels of sugar in it. When we take a very sweet liquid like that and pour it on the soil around the roots, it actually draws nutrients out of the plant. Rather than having these roots suck in nutrients, the high sugar around them draws it out through something called osmotic pressure. So dilute pop is okay, but I wouldn't pour concentrated stuff on your house plants. What about coke? A lot of people feel that coke actually will harm plants. Now part of this is because coke rusts things. You might have heard that if you take a nail and pour coke on it, it will rust. Well, it turns out that's another myth. Coke does not make things rust. There is something unique about coke though, and that is its pH. Coke has a pH of 2.3 because there's phosphoric acid in coke. Now that pH is pretty low, and if we just poured that on plants, it probably would do some damage. But remember, we're putting it on soil, and the soil has a buffering capacity. It's able to neutralize that acidity to a certain extent. The other thing is that phosphate is one of the key nutrients that plants need, so that is actually a benefit. However, it's not a great idea to take coke and pour it into a small pot. The pH would be a problem there. Now if you pour some coke out in the garden where you've got lots of soil, it's not going to be an issue. If you take that coke and dilute it by quite a bit, it will also not harm a small plant or a large garden. But then we need to come back and ask the question, is there some value in putting coke on the garden? And the answer is, not really. It doesn't have anything in it that plants need. We're at number 12, tea. Is tea good for your plants? Well, it turns out that tea does have some small amounts of nutrients in it. It won't harm the plant, but it doesn't add a lot to the plant either. So if you have some cold tea and you want to get rid of it, sure, pour it on your plants. It's a little bit better than just water. But don't brew tea just to feed your plants. Now, some people are worried about the pH of tea. Well, that's not really a concern either. Black tea has a pH somewhere around 5, 5.5, which is a little acidic, but the soil will neutralize that. Green tea, on the other hand, is between 7 and 10, which is actually a little more alkaline than plants like. Herbal tea has a pH from 6 to 7, which is just perfect for plants. So I guess if you made some black tea, it's too acidic. And some green tea, which is too alkaline, and you mix them together, it might be just perfect for plants. But the reality is, making tea for plants is a complete waste of time. If you have a little bit left over, pour it on the plants. If it has a little milk in it, that's even better. But it doesn't do a lot for them. So finally, number 13, vegetable water. We boil up our vegetables or steam them. We feel that a lot of those nutrients go in the water, and we can usually see that because the color changes. And we interpret that color as telling us, boy, there's lots of nutrients in these things. The reality is that there's almost no nutrients in the water you use to boil your vegetables. Now, there's a little bit that will help your plants. So if you have some hanging around, yeah, give it to your plants. It's better than just tap water, but don't go out of your way. The amount of nutrients you're adding are very small. So to finalize, should you be using things from the kitchen to feed your plants? And the answer is no. None of the things I've discussed are going to feed your plants well enough for them to grow. You have to give them some other form of fertilizer. Now some of the things won't harm them, a few of them will harm them, but none of them are very beneficial for plants. If you have these various liquids available, sure, take them and put them in your garden. And the garden is probably a better place than your house plant because you have a lot of soil and a very small amount of liquid to distribute. And so even if it's a little toxic, it's going to do much less damage. But don't go out of your way to collect this material and pour it on your plants. It's mostly just water. Now, if you're interested in learning more garden myths, have a look at my two books, Garden Myths, book one and book two. And there's a link for that coming up right now.